Bonjour, hello, welcome to Max Mountain World. Just finished work, sunset is happening. I thought I'd just take a little spin around, appreciate it, and uh, just check out what's happening with the works. Now I've been kind of busy at work myself, so I haven't really had too much time to go and check it all out. But the roads are very, very dirty. Dusty, dirty, we had a bit of rain this morning, last night this morning, and it got muddy as anything. So I, I do wish they'd clear up the roads, because it's a constant job cleaning up the cars every time I take them up. So, so a little look around, see what's going on. There's been quite a bit of progress. So, here's the video. So before I kick off with that, I'll, I'll do a quick view check and you'll notice in the first part of all this that a lot of the trees are changing colour now and that's a sign that winter is almost here. So as I say, we had a bit of a rainy night last night and a rainy morning this morning It's left some beautiful clouds up above. Very high clouds, very wispy clouds, absolutely beautiful. I'm sitting underneath or standing underneath a chairlift just now. But the the beast out and uh, just looking up the mountain behind in the skiable area sun is setting as I say leaves some beautiful colours on the mountain as well apart from the colours of the trees I need to zoom in and catch them but you can see a lot of the conifers are are changing colour and they'll be shedding their needles over winter so heading round down towards the station the main ski station and we've got uh, behind us on the mountain there to the north and then we've got the Parc des Ecrans in the distance not much in the way of clouds about but there's just one or two that seem to be just hanging out over a couple of the peaks and you can see just astonishingly beautiful sunset over these peaks this evening working a wee bit further around past the chair and just past the chair, another few clouds and stuff. These will all turn pink for a few minutes before uh, the sun finally sets. And then looking down towards Ombrang, our town down the mountain, just spot the end of the lake, the very top, the north side of the lake there. And that's about uh, 900 metres below me here, maybe 800. And that's it. So let's go and have a look and see what's going on in the station itself. So all the snow cannons have been put out, helicopter did that a little while back. Let's get back on the track here, go across a little wooden bridge, back down to the station. And this little bridge takes all sorts of vehicles up so no worries with running the car over it, I do it quite regularly. And you see trucks and all sorts of equipment about, all sorts of stuff going on. This now is uh, into the last week of October and uh, we should be getting uh, snow in the peaks that's going to stay in a couple of weeks, within the next couple of weeks. So just uh, running back down into the station. This is nice and smooth, this track normally. <laughs> it gets so well used. There are a couple of cars about as well, people doing stuff, people just doing odd jobs for themselves or whatever, getting themselves ready for, for winter, this season, which is approaching very, very quickly. Now, what I was saying about trees and stuff, right next to La Table restaurant, we have a tree that is, if I go into it, you'll see the colours of that. It's normally green. Now, I'll just head the wrong way around the system. Parking's permanently open off season, so the barriers are up and everything. No other cars really about. Still got the flower pots and things out. There's some stuff, work going on somewhere, one of the shops or one of the ski shops or something, I don't know. But one of the big things that's happening here is a complete revamp of the tourist office. 
So I'm not going to nosy in there because it's all barred off. I've got to respect that and the workers and their safety and stuff. Getting caught here, I think. Maybe, maybe not. No, he's parking up. So anyway, we've got, uh, yeah, the office tourism. It's more or less the same size, but they've just uh, revamped it up, or they're in the course of revamping it up. Quite a lot of changes about uh, the bottom end here. That's about the only thing that's really happening down here in the main station at 1650. And in the usual style, the, the barriers are all decorated up with the information on what's going to be happening with it all. See if I can't zoom in a little bit. That looks to me like they've drawn up a picture of the finished product. And all the information on it as well, just as we drive past. Deménagement, improvement, all the bike park stuff, World Cup or well, French Cup thing that we had a few weeks back, all sorts, all the information there. I'm just heading away, the only signs that things are happening here when you come up is just the scaffolding that's sitting there and of course the mud on the road. So there are the large chunk taken out the mountain to the left of us there. This is the new piece that they've made. It used to come down the right there where you've got the other matting, but that's all been changed. And they've got this uh, fencing set up, or they'll have red fencing hooked up to this. Basically to stop people falling off the side or stunting off the side. Keeps everyone in the actual main piece in the direction where they're supposed to be going. Now, a couple of videos recently, I do I have actually mentioned that they've got the wires up, the two cables, or the one cable that does the loop round for the new lift. All the pylons, wheels, everything's done. So uh, next stage will probably be uh, testing it with chairs and things. So again, the colours of the fading green trees. There's one that's not intending changing, I don't think. But uh, this is the odd one that doesn't do that. Apparently once every seven years they don't, but uh, six out of every seven years, they shed their needles. So looking down here, we've got uh, all the stuff they've done, a, a sort of water pool thing, I don't know what that is, probably a, a, a soak away or something for drainage water. And uh, the new chairlift, it's well advanced and obviously powered up because there's lights on in it. So that's what's going on down there. A lot of stuff. There's still a lot more to go, but a massive, massive area that they've they've created here for the ski arrival to that place. And I presume there's going to be some sort of parking down here to complement the parking across the far side here, which uh, will be given up when they've moved all the stuff away. So, uh, massive, massive place. It's going to take a lot of people away from 1800 up the top, uh, especially the daily people that come up. Mud, 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 and mud. So this is just down the bottom end on the way past, have a little look. A lot of heavy gear about. Another slightly different aspect on it all. Reception building, ticket office there. And the new uh, Doppelmayr. I'm about to get overtaken here. The new Doppelmayr uh, <laughs> lift. Almost finished at the bottom there, or the main structure is anyway. You get these guys hurtling about. This is the mud turns to dust, and this is the dust that I've got to drive through. So these guys have still got the storage area to the side here as well. It's a weird looking piece of kit that thing right? and that'll go anywhere. And again, got to do a quick view check here. <laughs> it's just a beautiful evening. Not just the trees that change colour, but these little bushy things as well, or new planted trees some of them as well. We're just heading up the road up the mountain here, heading up to 1800 and the beauty of the sunset again. Pink Mountain with the Boussalank. Aha, now, see if we can catch this. Nope, 
there's a plane up there, beautifully clear to the eye. Anyway, Boosterbank Mountain and all its glory in the sunset. I'm going to park up here as well, have a little look over the side. So we were down here just now, just below here to the left, and uh, you can see these uh, these poles set up for the fencing, very similar to the fencing that you see in ski racing on the telly, and the twists and turns with the piece with a rough bit off the side there, and uh, I'll go and check out what's happening with the bridge. They Okay, this is all fenced off, needless to say. I had to go back to the car there and delete some stuff. A bit of a rookie error. SD card full. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. It's uh, given me the opportunity to uh, check out more sunset on the Boussalank. Around there too. And the mountain opposite, over behind Cravu. Anyway, let's go up and see what the story is with the bridge. Again, marked off. <laughs> it's hardly going to stop anyone, this one. But uh, one thing I noticed here, <laughs> it's quite amusing, is uh, they have a sign here, no motorised vehicles. But uh, they have the car, have a motorbike. That's not a push bike, it's a little motorbike. So even the little motorbikes aren't allowed here. Again, yellows, pinks, all sorts happening. And this is the new path. That's where the bridge used to be going across to sort of mid-air, but it wasn't mid-air at the time. they have taken a whole chunk of that mountain away. So the walk now is down to there, and these black units down there are obviously the bridge. So uh, hopefully, I don't know if I'll be able to catch them because I say working and stuff. I work the same hours as these guys. So there's a lot happening that I don't see happening. I just uh, go and do tours like this after, see what's been happening. There's some pretty weird equipment down here. Here's one of these, I can only describe it as a mountain crawler. It's uh, a fantastic looking piece of kit. But uh, looking up above here as well, uh, I won't zoom out just now. I'll see if I can catch these wires. And I've got the join again. I'm pretty sure that is the join. Taking advantage of another view check, just as the you can see the, uh, this, the, the red bits all sort of vanishing. It's vanishing up the way. Uh, the Boosal Link Mountain behind there, you can see the red through the trees, but it's doing much the same. So the clouds again, just turning pink. Wispy clouds everywhere. Really beautiful evening, very cold, it's only 3 degrees just now. <laughs> so uh, the rest of the aircraft all behind the trees and stuff here. Again, yellow and orange trees, pink trees, the colours this time of year are just phenomenal, especially when you're driving around in forest areas. Again in the shade you can see in the mountain opposite the, the de-greening of the trees. So I head back up home. No entry, it says, yeah, breaking the law, breaking the law. I'll oh, head back up here, sunset is finished. Well, it's finished over there. It's nearly finished up on the Boussalink. You can see the line where the shadow of the mountain behind me is, is on it. But in front of 1800 here, this uh, little rolling carpet, the middle little one, is more or less finished got a truck coming I'm going to die right he's not coming in here so uh, they're setting up fencing here as well wooden fencing for the sledging area right in front of here there'll be lights set up and all sorts and uh, the big uh, rolling carpet they're getting well on with that the plexiglass on the top sections are all done and they're just uh, finishing off down the bottom here so uh, protection fencing to keep the public out non-existent uh, <laughs> it's gone but uh, they're making uh, all sorts of things down the bottom here for access from uh, the main uh, commercial area and whatnot up to there and this is where all the mud comes from and a couple of minutes later it's almost gone lovely clouds though so, we're back home. 
All right, so a little tour around just to see what's going on, what's happening. View checks in a beautiful cold evening. It's going to be down to about minus two, minus three tonight. A little bit frosty. We've had a few frosty nights and stuff. Anyway, on the lead out here, what I'll do is I'll, I'll take you around and show you what the dust does to uh, to the Jaguar. Really incredible. I wash it every time. This down here, I've got uh, a power washer. I can whip out in a couple of minutes, clean the car off, rinse it off and stuff. I keep doing that, keep doing that, and every time out, it just gets covered in it again. So anyway, that's today's video. Thanks very much for watching. Remember, keep subscribing, and until the next video, ciao. So constant washing and polishing, and being an estate car, it kicks up a little wake for itself. So you can see all the dirt and dust and stuff in the window. Watch this. <laughs> Gone. It's just the roof, rinse it, the dust sticks in the water while it's drying, and yeah, it's not too bad, but I mean that stuff is very light. It comes off dead easy. But it's a big car, and I shouldn't really be wanting to do that every time. Bits of mud kicking up off the front end and stuff.